We're looking at Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, and we will read it together on three. One, two, three. Now when Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, But Jesus, aware of this, said, Amen. Before you sit down, tell your neighbor, let me worship. No, nah, they don't believe you. Find somebody else. Tell them, let me worship. Let me worship. Let me worship. My goodness, let me worship. Uh, honestly, this is a very easy passage to preach on. But I wish God permitted me for me to just speak on it the way that it is written because it's a simple passage to just go in and ham on on giving God praise and worshiping but ah oh, God decided to twist things and I said Lord you are my boss so I got to do what you tell me to do because in all honesty sometimes as church people we pretend like we're worshiping, but we're not. In all honesty, some of us, even in our relationships, we have gotten, uh, this word is called complacent. We have gotten complacent in our relationships. We've gotten complacent in the way that we do things. And because of that, things just start falling by the wayside. When I got married, I got comfortable. Because I got comfortable, I got fat. I'll tell you all the truth. I ate, I ate, I ate. I slept, I slept, I slept. I worked, I worked, I worked. I did what married people do, married people do. <laughs> y'all, y'all looking at me like, you don't need to be married, Pastor. <laughs> the Bible. <laughs> hmm. But when you are complacent, you tend to be lazy. A complacent Christian is a lazy Christian. You get complacent when you get used to things, when you get used to someone. Are you here with me? Yeah. Sister, before you were married, before you saw your man, you made sure that he never saw you in a bonnet. Ah, uh, when he came to the house, before you open the door, it could have been a seven o'clock in the morning. For some odd reason, your makeup was already done. You look great. You took the moo-moo off. But because you've been together for so long now, hmm, he comes home from work. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Just dragging yourself. <laughs> We get complacent. I, I, I just told you, I got complacent in my marriage. I, 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 I got fat. I, I got married with a six pack, bro. <laughs> Complacency. Complacency as a believer will cause you to get lazy. You get so comfortable with God, you don't even pray anymore. You get so comfortable with God, you don't even talk to him anymore, no worship him anymore. Complacency. A complacent Christian is also an ungrateful Christian. 
You get so used to such a good meal, you don't even say thank you when you get it anymore. Because that's become the norm. But you should always be a grateful person and a grateful Christian whenever God does something for you, for you to be able to say thank you, Jesus. A, com a complacent Christian is an ungrateful one. You forget where God had taken you from and where you are now. So, boy, some of us forgot how we used to be. We forgot how we used to act. You forgot who you used to hang out with. You even forgot how you used to look. Before Jesus, you didn't look like this. We look beat up. We look downtrodden. We look finished. It is in God he has refreshed us, built us up, and made, me, and made us look brand new. <laughs> but the worst thing about a complacent Christian is that, boy, you are a dangerous Christian. And I'm not saying it in a good way. Because a complacent Christian, uh, not only are they ungrateful, they don't want you to be grateful for what God has done. So they get jealous and mad at you. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. They do. Because while God is blessing you because you still have that great relationship with him, <laughs> they get jealous at you because they're like, well, who are you? Because you remember where God took you from. You continue to praise him. They look at you like, well, it doesn't take all of that. It's a dangerous Christian. A complacent Christian that becomes so dangerous, they're like that friend that's jealous of you, that's giving you bad advice to mess up your relationship. A complacent Christian is, a, is an enemy of progress. They don't want you to move forward with God. They don't want you to move ahead of them in God. They always want you to remain under them, but thank God for his mercy and grace. It's amazing. Jesus comes into the house of a leprous man that he had healed. The Bible finally gives us his name, Simon, but I'm not sure if this is one of the 10 lepers that Jesus had healed previously where one of them came back to thank him. And this one that came back to thank him, Jesus asked him, what, wasn't there nine? And now we find him in the house of a former leprous man. And while he's there, the man invited Jesus into his house to come and eat. Unlike short man that climbed a sycamore tree. Unlike that wee little man we sung about, Zacchaeus, where he said, I am going to your house. The leprous man didn't wait for Jesus to invite himself. He said, no, 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 I remember what Jesus did for me. I need you to come to my house. How many of y'all are going to invite Jesus into your house today? When you remember what he's done for you, how many of you will come? Say, Jesus, come in my house. No, 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 no. But some of us don't want Jesus in your house. Because when Jesus comes in our house, he messes things up. When Jesus comes in our house, he doesn't leave everything the same. He turns, he turns things around. I, I kid you not, when Jesus comes into my house, he flipped things over. He turned tables. When he walked into the temple and saw things that was not right, he called it out. He said, my house shall be called a house of prayer and not a den of thieves. Today, I just want you to have a grateful heart. To remember what God had done for you. To remember where he took you from. To remember who you were before him. Sister, you remember they used to have you, they, they used to have nicknames for you? Hmm. They used to call you things that were unpleasant. Things that seemed like made you look fast. Oh, that's the term y'all don't know. Okay. It made you look like a T O T H O T. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah, know how to say it. <sighs> My brother, before you came to Christ, they, boy, they had names for you. you. You couldn't come around certain people because they called you player. Huh. They called you all sorts of names. They said you were no good. They said you were broke. They said you were disgusted. 
They said you were finished. But the moment Jesus got a hold of you, boy, he made you look so well and so swell. Everyone and everybody wanted to be around you. My goodness, he took away the things that people hated and he turned it around and made you look brand new. Oh, thank God for who he is. He came into Simon's house, the former leprous man. This former leprous man came in and invited Jesus for Jesus to eat in his house. The Bible said while Jesus laid out about to eat in the man's house, this woman came in. This woman came in with an alabaster box. When you study it, they tell you this was a very expensive box. This perfume that was in it, uh, the fragrance of it. They said you had to save over a year's salary to be able to afford a perfume like that. The average salary in the church is about, I would say, 90 to 120,000. Could you imagine saving that? Not to buy a house. Not to buy a lucid vehicle or a Mercedes. Not for anything fancy or some red bottom shoes. Or maybe some Gucci suits but just so you could buy a perfume, a cologne that you were saving for yourself. And now you decided, you know what? I'm not gonna even use it on myself. I'm gonna pour it on. Why? Because she remembered where she came from. This is the same woman that we're anticipating that was caught in adultery that Jesus came in when they tried to stone her. Huh. I was telling them in the 9 a.m. service, when they're about to stone Stephen, they, used to, they took their coat and folded and put it at Paul's feet before they stoned him. You can imagine this same crowd, they're used to it. We caught one. They're about to stone the woman and Jesus coming to be able to say, he that is without sin. Cast the first stone. And when they put their stones down, Jesus looked up and saw no one, and he asked her, where are they that accuse you? He said, they're not here. He said, hey, if they're not here to accuse you, neither do I. Go and sin. No. This is where I want to pause right here. Because this is where a lot of us, the gospel stops. Is where they drop the stones. But we forgot Jesus said, go and sin. Because for some odd reason, after Jesus saves us, we continue to live in sin. After he sanctifies us, we continue to live in sin. My brother, how could you continue to smoke weed after God has saved you? My sister, why are you still shacking up when God has delivered you? My brother, stop cheating on your wife if the Lord has set you free. But for some odd reason, you keep thinking this house that you're in, that it belongs to you. And I'm here to tell you, the house that you're in, it belongs to God. Because the Bible says this temple belongs to the Lord. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Bethany is translated for it to mean house of figs. Meaning house of men. This is where uh, bananas grow. This is where figs grow. This is where you find it. But it's also at Bethany when Jesus was going in and he saw the fig tree. And he, when he came to, to get a banana, he could not find one and he cursed it. He said, this is where I should find figs and yet I don't find it. So therefore you will no longer produce. They will burn you. And by the time they return, they found that tree dwindled to nothing. I say this because this is the church, but for some odd reason, God is not in it. This is where God's supposed to dwell. Would Jesus come here and say, this is my house? Or would he say, I don't find myself here and curse it? And when I'm talking about church, I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about you and I. Are you really going to accept Jesus and live for him? Or are you just going to live for yourself? The church is the house of God. When are you going to stop living in sin, church? I want to preach messages that gives you hope for blessings. 
I do. I want to preach the, these beautiful sermons for you to be able to, you know, just be blessed and highly favored. But God keeps telling me for me to tell you to repent and come back to him. Why is that, church? That means some of us are not living right. And if he's bringing this message to you, that means he wants you saved. If this is God's house, then why does it not look like God? God's house is beginning to, to look like a club. We play club music. We play club beats. We dress like we're going to the club. And we act like we're in the club. This is God's house. This is who we are. The moment you leave the parking lot, your language changes. It goes from praise the Lord to, huh. Your vocabulary dwindles from five letter words to four letter words. <laughs> this is God's house. And you keep playing in it. You keep thinking this is a social club for you to find a chick. I'm glad you're here because God is about to capture your heart. You keep thinking this is play hour because they look young, they don't know the Lord. You're about to be shocked. You're about to have a rude awakening. To realize that the church is holy, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. This is the church. A whole bunch of people that are in the church have been hanging out with God but don't know God. That's amazing to me. The disciples have spent time with Jesus. This is the week before Jesus have died. This is the week when this is happening. This is the week before the passion. This is the week before he died. So that means they spent over three years with him. But yet they see someone worship. And the Bible said when they saw the woman coming in, when worshiping, they had an indignant spirit that came in them. Well, you could be in church and still not know God. You could be in church and still not saved. You can be in church and still don't re re boy, really love God. I got a feeling there might be a whole lot more Judases than Peters in the church. There might be a whole lot of doubting Thomases uh, than there are, you know, uh, Nathaniels in the church. Uh, I want you to understand uh, uh, that this is God's house, church. You are God's. You belong to God. Is that not what the message God sent for you through, uh, through Minister Lynn this morning? This is God's house. You are God's house. You belong to God. And yet you want to be cute. My sister, if this is God's house, then you don't need to dress sexy. Can I talk to you this morning? Uh, I know they're not going to like me today. Marcellus, I know, but I'm okay. Your sexiness will not get you a man. Your sexiness will get you a date, but it will not get you a husband. My brother, can I talk to you today? This is not the place for you to post up. So let your eyes lurk around to see what's going on. If you want to do that, go to the gym. This is the place where you need to fix your eyes on God. Where you need to fix your eyes on the cross and see what God is able to do. And for him to deliver you, set you free, to remove that spirit of lust out of you. This is God's house. Oh, I know, I know, you don't like this. I, I, I told you God twisted it for me. Because uh, the disciples did not realize that the woman was worshiping. Because they felt like it was too much. You ever start worshiping and people think you're doing too much? Yeah. You got your hands raised. No, put your hands down. Yeah. 
You're crying before the Lord. What's all this crying for? I, I, listen, I've come to the point where I don't care how I look before God's presence. Ah, it's not going to be coming down my nose. Let me give God praise. Uh, I, I don't care what you think about me. Let me cry before the Lord. I remember what he's done for me. Uh, I know where he got me from. I know where he saved me from. Um, do you understand what I'm telling you, church? This is God's house. You are God's house. I want you to say it again. I belong to God. This is God's house. My sister, there's no reason for you to keep sleeping around if you're God's house. My brother, there's no reason for you to be able to be the community, you know what I mean. <sighs> because you are God's house. When you belong to God, you respect yourself. When you belong to God, your speech is different. Huh. You don't cuss. Your speech is different. Even when you're in upset, you don't lose control. Your speech is different. When you belong to God, you don't hit women. You belong to God. Your hands should be used to praise God and lift up holy hands. When you belong to God, you don't need to use profanity. When you belong to God, you don't need any extracurricular activities to satisfy your flesh. You just go before God and he fills that hole. That worship, you keep thinking worship is just singing. Worship is actually what you do outside of the church building. It's your lifestyle, how you live. It's how you serve God. It's how you respect your parents. It's how you love your wife. It's how you raise your children. Wait, 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 wait. Because everybody keeps thinking this is ministry right here, preaching. This is not ministry. I was telling somebody that earlier. This is a task that God has given me. Ministry is my wife and daughter. Ministry is to make sure when the trumpet sounds that they both come on. Let's go. We're going to go to heaven. That's ministry. This is a task that God has given me that went over your heads. This is called the ark, so let me use Noah. Noah, when God gave him the task to build the ark, that was a job that God gave him for 100 years. But the ministry was to make sure his wife and sons got in the ark. Your purpose is to make sure anyone that is following you follows Jesus. Yeah. You point them right back to Jesus. Oh, no, no, it's not me. It's the Lord. It's got nothing to do with me. It's the Lord. But yeah, you want to keep taking the glory. No, stop taking God's glory. It belongs to God. The woman came in with the alabaster box and poured it on Jesus' head. The disciples got upset. Listen to me, church. Stop worrying about church people that get upset with how you worship. I, I, I can't keep being cute, church. Can, can I get comfortable? I, I appreciate y'all. You know, y'all all right. Thank you, my brother. I, I want you to understand. I can't continue to look cute to give God praise. I remember what he's done for me. I remember what he brought me through. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here today. Can I be honest with you? My mama used to tell me stories about when I was a little boy, how they used to do voodoo magic to try to kill me. They even sent one day a cat to try to take my voice. The moment I started talking as a three-year-old, uh, they started, uh, slowly my voice just started going down, going down. And my dad heard the cat in the back of the house. It's crazy. He went after the cat with a machete and tried to chop him. And that's when my voice came back. Uh, understand uh, that the, the, the enemy has been trying to kill you. But if you made it this far... And somebody better give God some praise in here. You don't pay my bills to tell me how to worship God. The woman saved her own year's salary to be able to give it to God. And yet the disciples thought they had the audacity to think that they could tell the woman what she needs to do with her money. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? 
You buy a car, somebody comes and says, well, I wouldn't buy this one. <laughs> you have a housewarming party. <laughs> they get in your house, oh, well, okay. <laughs> I see, yeah, that's nice. But you know, the one down the street, listen, shut your mouth. <laughs> you didn't give me a penny towards it. This is why when God has a blessing, no one should say anything concerning it. If you're not going to praise God with me, then close your mouth. If you're not going to worship, if you're not going to lift your hands, if you're not going to open your mouth and say, thank you, Jesus, then I don't want to hear a thing. You need to close your mouth. My goodness. Man, if I was getting married today, I wouldn't invite anybody. What? I got married over 21 years ago. You know, what I did was walk around, check on everybody. You know, how's everything going? You know, heard people, well, the rice wasn't that good. <laughs> this is US, this is not Canada. You didn't pay to come to the wedding. <laughs> you eating for free. You didn't give no gift. And that they're complaining about the food that they're eating for free. That's I, Oh, my goodness. Listen, when God has blessed you, just give him praise, church. Yeah. Remember where God took you from? Boy, they used to have nicknames for you. Fast Susie. You remember your, boy, you remember your reputation back then? Even in college? Huh. Boy, they say you like a football team. You, you just, you're like running backs. Y'all get it tomorrow. My brother used to have a bad reputation, remember? Remember? They used to call you weed head. Because you were always high. Even when you weren't high, they thought that you were high, just because just you were so high. But yet God came in and he turned around and changed your life. Amen. Made you brand new. It's amazing to me. I met some of my high school guys, you know, uh, a couple weeks back. I looked at them. They're like, yo, man, you ain't changed. You still look the same. I said, nah, man, I gained a little weight. They said, yeah, but your face is still the same. You still look strong. I'm like, yeah, you know, God has blessed me. And then they were, they were like, well, what have you been doing? I said, well, God has blessed me. <laughs> they said, well, what are you doing? I said, I'm a spiritual firefighter. <laughs> I said, you're a what? You're a firefighter? No, a spiritual firefighter. <laughs> They said, I'm part of the EMT, yeah. the first response team for heaven. Yeah. <laughs> they were so confused. And then I had to keep going down. Like, but, but what do you do? Well, I said, I counsel. Yeah. <laughs> I said, so you're a counsel? I'm like, well, I'm, I do a little bit more than that. And by the time I got tired of just, <laughs> I said, I passed her. They're like, oh, okay. I said, what do you do? They said, well, you know, I, I work at this high school, da da da. And I'm like, oh, all right, cool. The other one worked at a company over in Fort Lauderdale. I said, all right, cool. I said, man, but you guys got gray hair everywhere. I was like, man, what, what, what happened? Yeah, life. <laughs> I said, yeah, life be lifing. <laughs> but then they wanted to know my secret. To staying young. One of them remember, I grew, I grew up on Chillingworth, so they remember my parents' house. They remember, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> They're like,
like, yo, your parents still stay there? I said, yeah, man. I said, remember back in the day? I said, yeah. I said, we, we, we used to. We did. He said, yeah, I know. <laughs> you still remember Oka? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I said, God has changed me. Yeah. I said, the reason I'm able to stay so young is because he keeps renewing me. I said, the moment you come into Christ, he makes you brand new. I said, I promise you, by the time you come to Christ, he will change your life as well. They're like, yeah, I don't believe in this religious stuff, this God stuff. I said, my brother, listen, whether you believe it or not, one day you will either bow down before him (laughs) as a servant or you bow down to him forcefully. As a demon. He said, well, we'll see. I said, well, God bless you. <laughs> but if the Holy Spirit ever touches your heart and you need prayer, man, here's where we're at. Yeah. I want you to understand, you don't look this good because of your mama's genes. Yeah. You don't look this good because your daddy was such a good looking guy. You look this good because the Holy Spirit is in your life. You look this good because God has blessed you. You look this good because you've been worshiping him. Because others that don't have Jesus, the moment they get into trouble, they go, they run to drugs and alcohol. But you, the moment you get into trouble, you run to God and say, God, here I am. Come and deliver me. And this is why he says this is your reasonable worship for you to be able to worship him. He says, I appeal to you, therefore, my brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a holy sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your spiritual worship. The King James says your reasonable worship, meaning it's the least that you could do. Then it goes on to the next verse that do not be conformed. When the woman with the alabaster box changed, she ain't go back to her pimps. She ain't go back to her dudes. She didn't go back to her, her lesbian lifestyle. No, I don't know what she was doing. All I know is the moment Jesus said, go and sin no more, she changed her life around. Today, your life's got to be changed. We can't remain the same. Your life has to be changed. The world that knew you has to know a different you now. We can't be the same. We can't remain the same person. We have to change because the God that is in us, ah, he calls for us not to be conformed to this world, but for us to be transformed. Somebody say transformed. Transformed. First, by the renewing of your mind. For your mind to be renewed, you have to change your environment and the people that you're around. Oh, that went over your heads. See, you can't expect to be wealthy and hang around a whole bunch of poor folk. You can't expect to be a saint and hang around just a whole bunch of sinners. Especially when they're not changing, or you're not changing them, they're changing you. When you are trying to change the renewing of your mind, you got to change your scenery. You got to stop watching certain things on your phone. Certain movies on Netflix, you got to quit. Certain, listen, certain subscriptions, you got to give up. It's crazy. I didn't know Triple X could have subscriptions. How you believe you got a subscription to? I'm going to ask that again. How are you a believer and you got a subscription to? As soon as a new download come, oh. <laughs> your email is manofgod at gmail.com. I'm sure the people that's behind the firewall, they're like, man, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. 
child of the most high at Yahoo. <laughs> For my old school, I love Jesus at AOL. <laughs> It says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If God's going to accept your worship today, then we need to understand that we have to live a holy lifestyle. We have to live a holy life, not just within these four walls, but the moment you leave for you to be able to worship the Lord Jesus like never before. Where your yes is yes and your no is no. For you to follow the word of God, his laws and precepts and live for him. Then it's the little Betty, come on back up. I'm going to have her lead you back into worship. This time, I don't want you to worry about anyone around you. They mean nothing to you because they don't help you with your bills. I want you to worship God like never before. To give God your best because today might be our last day on earth. Jesus might come tonight. He might come tomorrow. So let's give him...